Dental Fuel, the podcast that focuses on what no one else is talking about. Mistakes. The dental world is full of before and afters, and no one is talking about the middle. Dental Fuel brings you the unspoken in between. In this episode, we have Dr. Bill Chen, who talks to us about a clinical mistake and how it relates to digital dentistry. Let's get into the episode. Dr. Bill Chen, welcome to Dental Fuel. How are you doing today? Doing well, thanks. All right. I'm so excited to meet with you today, but I would love if you would tell me and my listeners and the listeners who are joining us today um, where you're coming to us from. So I reside in Sebring, Florida. It's pretty much the dead center of the state. If you take a map out, you probably will miss it, but it's, you know, put an X through Florida or right in the middle. Very cool. Are you a Florida native? Yes, kind of. I was born in Maryland, but moved here in uh, 73 when I was three months old, so I don't know any different and I never left. No, so, very yeah, cool. I very guess cool. in that sense... Honorary Floridian. Cool. And you shared with me before we jumped on our on our uh, conversation today that you were out of town. Where? What were you doing? Um, I also live in Orlando. So. Oh, okay. okay. And I commute back and forth from Orlando. I don't have a second practice there. That's the second question that I get. Yeah. After that, he's like, you know, what are you doing there? Do you have a practice? No, I only have the solo practice, single practice here. Uh, my family goes to private school, and kind of have to do the back and forth and thing. But cool. Well. It- Close enough that you can make it work, but far enough that it adds a little bit of time to your commute each day. It does. Well, Bill, I would love if you would talk to us a little bit about um, your practice and how you built that up. I I looked at your website and it seems like it's a flourishing practice with uh, quite a few associates and a a ton of Google reviews, which is awesome. Um, But please tell us a little bit about um, what your practice is like. So um, Chen Dental was established in 2005 after um, I did an associateship like most people do right out of school. I graduated University of Florida, immediately uh, started as a, an associate. And, you know, three and a half years of that, I kind of came to the conclusion that wasn't going to work out. And so I started Chen Dental in 2005, four chairs, and currently we were at 17 chairs in one location. In between there, I had built a practice um, 20, 2007 and outgrew that and moved into our current location, which is 17 chairs. And so we're kind of climbing into that eighth year mark now. And we are Exciting. five doctors. Yeah, thanks. We're five doctors strong. And we just hired our sixth doctor who should be starting in October. That's super cool. How many uh, chairs are in your practice? 17, 17 chairs. Wow. Um, yeah. Five associates with one on the way. And then uh, I'm pretty much administration at this point. Very cool. Did you always know that you wanted to go into a private practice and own your own? No, actually. I did not. Oh, I thought I was going to be associate chip and partner into a practice and that didn't work out. So still trying to figure out a lot of the things we'll be talking about mistakes, I'm sure at some point today. But, um, you know, you have that dream of walking into a dream practice and associate, you know, being an associate and offer the position of partner at some point in time. And, you know, in my situation, that didn't work out that way. And I see yet to figure out how to do that in my own. I would love to know, before we get into these uh, questions of mistakes, a little bit about how you built out your office, knowing that you wanted to scale and how you got to the scale that you're at now. So I was fortunate enough that um, a doctor at my church, uh, knowing that I had the potential of leaving that practice and and, uh, not knowing what I wanted to do, that particular doctor wanted to, to retire for like five years. And so he was working three and a half days a week. Um, you know, doing decent, but knew he wanted to stop. And so he approached me after I was unemployed and said, Hey, no, I think you should stay around. This is your hometown just as it is, you know? And, and I kind of agreed, but at the same time, I was kind of, kind of like, didn't really think that was possible. Mm-hmm. So he presented it to me and we negotiated and uh, I bought the small little practice of four chairs. It's me and a, uh, an assistant front desk and hygienist, you know, quaint little place. Um, that only lasted for about 18 months because I didn't own the building, only the practice. And as soon as the lease was up, you know, I had already decided to buy and build one from the ground up thinking that was going to be the forever practice, the forever home. Um, and so I built a like roughly around 4,000 square foot uh, building, which I occupied uh, two thirds of it. And then the other third, I also wanted to do real estate a little bit. So I rented the other half, a third to my father, who was becoming a retired ophthalmologist. I said, you can finish out right here. And so we shared that building for about three years. And uh, what I learned during that time was that I hadn't learned what associateship was. And, you know, 
most of them don't go well, which I'll be honest, ours didn't go well. And so I said, well, I didn't, I don't think I learned my lesson. So I'm going to create the job that I never was offered. And I called a buddy of mine in Chicago during a blizzard, mind you. And it was cold and he's a Floridian. And I said, All right, how does coming back to Florida look like for you? And he's like, very good right now because <laughs> I'm freezing. So we started working together as an, and him as an associate and I as the owner. And uh, within that three years, we hired another associate. And so we were quite cramped at that time. And so my dad moved on. And, and so we took over the whole building. And at that point, we had nine chairs. And this went on until eventually we had our third associate, uh, my brother. And I went part time at that point to build the next office, which was where we are currently. And from 2014 to 2015, I really just concentrated most of my time getting that thing off the ground. And then we, of course, moved in. And from 2015 to currently, we have grown to fully occupy that building. And now we're at capacity. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a journey, but I still haven't learned all the lessons that I think um, most people, you know, like for instance, partnership. I think I mentioned that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was associateship. I think I've gotten that down or, you know, I've been through, I have six now. Over the course of that time, I've had eight. So two of them have moved on, and I'm wondering how that progresses into possible mm -hmm. partnership in another location or who knows. Wow. So that's kind of where, where I am. That's such a cool journey. Uh, I I love that. What what a unique opportunity for you to kind of continue to scale. And I think that things kind of just worked out for you in that way. Yes. And I would not take credit for all of that. Obviously, anyone who's successful that I've found has some sort of a coach. And I've had a coach for 12, going on 13 years. And without that coaching, uh, I wasn't, wouldn't have been able to focus on what it, what it would be like to scale because no, none of us or I haven't ever done it before. Mm -hmm. and so to just wing it and get lucky is not how I do things. I study the art of, you know, the business, if you will, and then hire coaches that seem to be successful at helping people grow. So that, that I have to give credit to the Scheduling Institute and Jay Geyer, who are my uh, coaches and amongst others also, but that one in particular when it comes to dentistry. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause you definitely don't learn that in a dental school. I'll tell you that. Oh no. No, I think the only business class I took was accounting and I learned what the colors meant. And I think that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Red and black. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. 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 Well, Bill here at Dental Fuel, we are here uh, dedicated to learning about people's mistakes, uh, growing from each other's mistakes, and sharing pearls with our listeners that hopefully can learn from other mistakes and, and not make those or hopefully get some pearls to help them in their own mistakes. Sure. But I would love to know a little bit about a clinical mistake that you've made in your journey as a dentist and how you overcame uh, that clinical mistake. Um, <clears throat> so mistakes, that's a great um, word. I don't know how to define that because really there aren't any mistakes if you just don't repeat them right um, mm, fair however, enough, yeah. yeah i mean however i think the biggest mistake we all make is not knowing when to start right and then until it's after and you're like man i wish i would have mm. done that sooner every time you find yourself saying that uh, i wish i would have done it sooner right um it's almost like a regret almost maybe a mistake i don't know um, I've done it so many times in my career that I try to recognize that sooner so that I don't lose time, which is the one thing you can't make more of. And so clinically, I know what probably what people would say is an oops or something like that. Um, I think for me, the biggest mistake, I mean, because obviously we've grown, but the biggest mistake is we could have done it faster, more efficient. If I just started a few things, I'll give you one. Um, impressions. We all take them, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. polyvinyl, polyether alginate, sulfide, whatever it is. Um, in today's age, I wish I would have started digital dentistry sooner because the amount of money I spent, or I should say the amount of money the practice spent on impression material, retakes, downtime, patient coming back. I mean, the math is there. And, and sometimes it's hard to kind of sift through some of what the reps are saying when they're trying to sell you on things. And I would encourage people to kind of take that business mindset. Okay. What they're saying could be partially true, but why don't we just apply it to where we are today? I'll tell you right now, I've saved so much time and money going digital 
that I, I would definitely recommend people don't make that mistake and wait too long. Um, we can say that the same thing about digital x-rays. Oh my goodness, like no more chemicals, yeah. no more. <laughs> oh, like I started that way and immediately calculated the amount of money I was spending and the time and the smell and you know, just a few computers and a sensor later, we were done with that. So anyway, I hope that helps. Yes, very helpful and very insightful. I, I love uh, that you said that, you know, they're truly not mistakes if you if you learn from them, which is true. They're, I think they're just kind of lessons in life. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, really cool that you touched on digital dentistry and uh, the leap of faith that you maybe have to take to take that first step. I think that for many um, young dentists and even some more seasoned dentists who may be skeptical in going the direction of digital dentistry, I think that that could really help them um, in in going in the direction of, you know, taking that first step towards bringing something new into their practice and improving their practice and improving the patient experience and keeping their overhead down. Yeah, that overhead thing is tricky. Um, you definitely have to do your ROI or return on investment and really just make a plan. I. I'll give you a mistake in technology because it's not always good, right? Um, I bought a hard tissue laser, soft tissue laser for like the tune of like 68,000 back then. And sure, it did a bunch of stuff. But at the end of the day, I could have done well with just a $4,000 laser. You know, you start to get distracted by all the bells and whistles. And it's not that it can't do it. It definitely can. But if you're not set up in your practice to do that, why are you playing with those big toys? You know, I tried. I, I did crown lengthening surgeries, bone um reduction surgeries, all those things. And yes, it can do that. But in a day-to-day -day operation where you have to run a business, sometimes that doesn't fit. And you just have to make sure it's a good fit before you go and spend that kind of money. That thing was a trophy of mine. I literally left it in the corner of my office to stare at wow. every day to say- It's an expensive trophy. That is not what I'm going to do moving forward. Until I eventually gave it away to a friend who actually does those procedures. And I said, it's yours for free. I'm done looking. Wow. At what a I'm good done, friend. Yeah. I'm, I'm done looking at the trophy. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Right. So. We as dentists, I think can be um, distracted by, by the shiny, by the, oh. by the new thing, but it's, it's so important to recognize that, you know, that shiny may not fit in your practice and it may be cool and others may be able to use it, but right. that might be not, may not be the right fit for you and your office. Yes. Yes. And, and we learn. And, and that's the important thing. I kept it around for a whew, decade, I think, before I wow. finally let it go for free. Yeah. So just like, <laughs> I don't care. I know it's only worth so much, but like you, I know you use it because you've been using it since we bought it together. You can have a second one. I mean, because you're definitely going to put it to use and I am not. So for what it's worth. On that. Yeah, I, I bet that I bet they were super happy with that. Oh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Dental Fuel. Be sure to listen to our next episode where we continue our conversation on digital dentistry and a financial mistake that Dr. Chen has made. And don't forget to check out Ignite DDS Masterminds. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Ignite DDS, and at Dental Fuel. You can also find me on Instagram at tsmaestas.dds.